Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein. We're going to go up to Western New York. We give an update on what's going on in this Buffalo mob biker racketeering case where we have co unindicted co-conspirators and future witnesses ending up dead under suspicious circumstances. As of right now, for the first time, uh, the prosecutors in Western New York right now out of Buffalo are declaring that the August 1st death of future witness Crystal Quinn is now being categorized as a homicide. It's the first time it's officially uh, been declared uh, a murder and the murder of a witness. There was a superseding indictment that dropped last week um, with a overarching obstruction, um, obstruction of justice related to uh, the murder of a witness that uh, came down in federal court last week, uh, naming Peter Ger named six people, including uh, Peter Gerace, the nephew of Buffalo Mafia Don uh, Joe Pizza Todaro, um, who is going on trial for racketeering in the near future, uh, drug trafficking, sex trafficking, bribery, and money laundering. And also named in this obstruction indictment is the international president of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club, John Tommy O. Ermin could be the most powerful biker boss in the world right now. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But this is looking like, to me, and I'm going to put my lawyer hat on. I have a law degree. Don't practice. Uh, I would say that this is a, a clear tell by the government that in addition to this racketeering case that's going to go to trial this winter, it's now been split into two cases. Peter Gerace uh, will be the defendant in one, and then his co-defendant, retired DEA agent Joe Bon Giovanni, who's accused of pocketing a quarter million dollars with bribes to protect mafia-connected drug businesses, as well as the, the alleged drug business that was being run out of uh, Gerace Jr.'s strip club, Pharaoh's, in uh, Chictawaga, uh, New York, right outside of Buffalo, a suburb of Buffalo. And it's pretty clear that there are going to be homicide charges that are going to come, I would say, sooner than later, uh, in addition to the obstruction within the racketeering. So this this puts things at a whole, it's a whole new ballgame now. Um, we're no longer talking about if that, if what I'm predicting happens, occurs, um, I would guess, before summertime um you go from a racketeering case with suspicious deaths um new york supreme court judge john mikulski allegedly committed suicide he was an unindicted co-conspirator uh, just days after his house was raided by the feds and then crystal quinn popped up dead uh about six months after being outed as a confidential or not a confidential form but a, a future witness and had gone in front of the grand jury. So, again, this is a whole new ballgame. We, we were talking about racketeering, and you know, I know that the max sentences are pretty heavy. But realistically, if if uh, Gerace Jr. gets convicted of the racketeering, you're looking at probably 10, 20 years, um, which isn't impossible to complete. When you're talking about homicides and the murders of the murder of a federal witness. Again, it's a whole new ball game. Uh, the severity of of the charges, the, the severity in terms of how the judge and the jury would be looking at you. I, I would be very worried right now if I was Peter Gerace Jr., Tommy O, and frankly, Joe Pizza. And let's be very clear, Joe Todaro, a.k.a. Joe Todaro Jr., uh, a.k.a. Big Joe or Joe Pizza, legitimate millionaire. Um, has never been convicted of a federal crime. He owns the restaurant empire, La Nova, but he is, you know, he is subtext um, or uh, there's an undercurrent that, that screams his name that, that, that even though he has not been indicted or implicated in this case, that is like in the shadow of this case, because uh, the fact that Drace Jr. is his nephew, the fact that according to Crystal Quinn's, Grand jury testimony, Gerace Jr. bragged of being a made member, a mob member of his uncle's crime family, of having very 
deep connections into law enforcement. But right now, even though Joe Todaro is not named or implicated in any of this, the government believes that Jerace Jr. and Tommy O ultimately report to Joe Todaro Jr. Um, there's also uh, the belief that Tommy O actually is almost maybe on even plane with uh, Big Joe and that even though Tommy O works at Pharaoh's as the general manager and is officially employed by Jerace Jr., he's actually Jerace Jr.'s boss. But again, that's neither here nor there. The question is, if these murder charges come down the pike, who runs to the government for their first deal? And to, to, to color up a little bit more of this case, since we talked about it last, you know, the the one piece of thread I think that you could pull to, to disrupt everything and pull everything apart is Simon Gogolak, and he's under indictment right now in a drug and in a weapons case. As uh, he's been indicted as a um, for obstruction of justice related to, to Quinn's homicide, he was with Quinn when she died, uh, and he was a high school friend of Crystal Quinn who had not seen Crystal in ten to twenty years. And then, if you believe prosecutors and what's being said uh, from the government side of these things, the mob. The outlaws found out that Gogolak had uh, had a previous acquaintance with Quinn and sent him at her um, to have a random, quote unquote, random run in at a bar and hopefully have her confide in him, which she did uh, tell him that she was in fear for her life and she needed to go into hiding. And that opened up the door for, for what these people wanted, if, if you believe the government, for Simon Gogolak to say, listen, I know we haven't seen each other in a while, but I think very fondly of you from what we when, when I knew you in high school, I'm going to hide you. Come with me to Allegheny County, about 90 miles out of Erie County, which is where Buffalo is. Uh, she stayed with him for, I believe, three or four days. And on the fourth day, uh, she popped up dead in his house. Um, the belief is that she was given a Xanax uh, pill that was laced with 400 times a lethal dose of fentanyl. And we also know that Simon Gogolak was, or we've recently learned that Simon Gogolak was texting and calling people, communicating over encrypted emails, that he was now a hitman for hire. This was all in the months before uh, Crystal Quinn ended up dead. Uh, he was talking about painting houses, like the movie, the, the Irishman, um, telling people that I paint houses now, which was code for I'm a hitman now. He was also in contact with a known hitman that's tied allegedly to the, to the uh, mob and the bikers. And then Crystal Quinn in the last moments of her life, it looks like was texting uh, out to friends and family that Simon had set her up that Simon was going to let the outlaws kill her and to call 911 immediately. Um, we also know that Simon brought Crystal uh, to some biker parties uh, in the hours before she died. So there were bikers that are con connected to the outlaws, a group called the Rare Breed, um, which is the, the biggest support club in New York for, for the outlaws. Uh, and they were surrounding you know they they went to a party that was all rare breed uh and then within hours she was dead i think the belief is that someone at that party gave gogolak uh the lace xanax to give to quinn back at his house um but right now i think the big takeaway from this is that i, I believe there are murder charges uh on the verge of dropping probably after the racketeering case is completed in the spring but it's a whole new chapter here. And I would say the entire Magadino crime family empire, the entire outlaws motorcycle club empire right now is a house of cards. Um, the last thing I'll say about Tommy O no criminal convictions, but it looks like according to the government and, and the detention memo, Tommy O became boss about 10 years ago. Uh, a lot of support from the old guard, the taco Bowman regime, uh, he he idolized Taco Bowman. I guess he had a, a a room in his house that was a shrine to Taco Bowman. He's in contact with a lot of the Taco Bowman loyalists that are in prison now doing life. Uh, there's communication going back before back and forth between Tamio uh, in Buffalo and them in prison. And then we've also learned 
that Tommy O is quite a uh, world traveler that uh, in you know his passport uh, looks like he's been globe trotting since he became boss, which to the federal government tells you that he's going around the world on outlaws business. You got to remember outlaws are an international um, criminal conglomerate. So this guy swings a big stick, a lot of juice with Tommy O. I mean, I would say even more so than the Magadinos. And right now, I'm predicting a murder case is going to hit at Tommy O's doorstep pretty soon, as well as Durace Jr.'s doorstep, as well as uh, Gogolak's doorstep. So we'll keep you updated. I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod out.